Hello friends, welcome back to another wrap up. This is going to be my wrap up for June. This month I read seven books, which is significantly less than what I normally read, but it's still definitely like a chunky amount of books. Um, but this month has just been like a little bit busier for me, so I haven't really been focusing as much on reading as I normally do. However, the seven books that I read, six of them I really really enjoyed. There was only one book in there that was kind of a dud that I was not really feeling. I think because I had less time to read, I was a lot more intentional with the books that I was choosing to read, um, as opposed to last month where I read quite a lot of books, but a lot of them just really didn't stick with me and I didn't find too much value in them. Whereas this month, I really like the books that I read, minus one of them. There are also two things that I want to start doing with my wrap ups. Um, the first thing that I want to start doing is including a YouTuber shout out in every single month. I have had a couple YouTubers shout me out in the past before and it's really helped my channel grow. Not that I'm some like massive booktuber by any means, but it does, it always feels nice when someone sort of like recognizes you. And I do like finding new YouTubers and there's always someone like new that I'm, you know, following and, and loving their content from. So I've decided every single month for my wrap up, I'm going to include one YouTuber that I've recently recently discovered like the last couple months whose content I really enjoyed that I think you would also enjoy. And another thing I'm going to start doing is categorizing uh, how I have acquired different books because I, I find that really interesting sort of do I get my books from the library or, or am I, am I thrift, thrifting them? Am I buying them new? All these different things. So I'm going to start talking, uh, just breaking down briefly at the beginning of my wrap ups where I purchased the books or how I got the books and also just how much I spent on them. Sorry, someone is honking their horn outside, but Anyways, let's start. Let's first talk about the YouTuber that I want to shout out and that is Netta Celine. I discovered her just a couple months ago. I think she's only been making videos for maybe two months and her videos are so high quality. Like she does for the most part just like sit down videos, but the editing, the video quality, just the the images that she captures are so stunning. It's like watching a cinematic masterpiece while also learning about books. What I really like about her videos is that she does do sort of like the classic videos where she has, you know, book hauls and book reviews, things like that, but there tends to be an educational aspect to it as well. She does also have videos that are more on the educational side. So she has done videos about Juneteenth and the history of that, about book bans, especially like specifically in America as well. However, the video that I liked, I I think the most from her just because it was the most unique in my eyes um she did an entire video sort of like deep diving into chicken soup for the soul and like that franchise and that series which i did not realize was nearly as big as it was not as it was actually as it is because they continue to produce new books to this day which shocked me chicken soup for the soul is a series that i definitely have not even thought about in years except for when i see them in like mass quantities at the thrift stores but i have not picked one up I think since I was like maybe 11 years old got like chicken soup for the preteen soul or something but she talks about those books sort of like the ridiculous ones that they have out there and then also sort of a lot of the places where they are lacking in sort of like representing different communities fantastic video I will link that one down below I just think it's it's interesting it's just such a it's a topic I have not seen discussed about on booktube before now, where did I get my seven books? Five of them I actually got from the library. I've been using my mom's library card, which has been fantastic. I've been spending a lot of time at the library actually reading and studying, and I've just loved being back in that atmosphere. So five of the books I got for free from the library, and then two of them I listened on audiobook from Scribd. I do have a Scribd account, which I might not have for much longer, but we'll see. Um, and I pay $8.99 US dollars for that every single month. And like I said, I listened to two books from that, so kind of like $4.50 per book. Um, I do tend to use my script account a bit more than I did this month, so for me it's usually a good value. Um, but regardless, I got two books that are fairly new releases for $8.99 this month, so I am happy with that. All right, now after all of that, let's dive into the books that I did read this month. I only have one book here to show you because the rest, like I said, were either audiobooks or from the library and I've returned them. But the one book that I do still have with me that I have yet to return to the library is Monster Child by Rahela Nayimzada. This is a newer release by a Canadian author. I had never heard of this book before, but the library was kind of like promoting it at the front when you walked in and I noticed it and I just thought the cover was really interesting. This is a story of a family from Afghanistan that has immigrated from Afghanistan and they now live in Vancouver, Canada. There are three children. Um, the, the oldest daughter, she is from a previous marriage. So the father of this family is her biological father and then the mother is her step mother and then the other two kids are the biological kids of the mom and the dad that are in this story. There is a bit of magical realism in this story. The oldest daughter when she cries it's actually blood. It's not tears it's like actual blood that's coming out of her. What I really loved about the story is that it's broken up into sort of three chapters. Each one of them is one of the different children 
telling the reader and sort of going through a chain of events about why they think they are the monster child, why they think like sort of they are wrong and sort of the outcast in their family but also in society. It talks a lot about uh, racism and discrimination that happens to this family living in Canada. It also talks a lot about the sexism that happens within their culture and sort of like within their family dynamics and their family friends and a lot of the secrets that are held within that as well. This story follows a couple months uh, within this family's lives where a lot of like quite um, intense things happen. There's definitely a lot of trigger warnings. If you are interested in this book, I would look them up. Um, but a lot of different things happen and each of the, of the children, while they're telling why they believe that they are the monster, why they think like sort of like they are the, the wrong child and like the bad child in a sense, they reveal different parts of this plot. So by the time you get to the to the last child, the boy, that sort of like fills in all the puzzle pieces of like what has actually happened within this family. I just thought it was such an interesting way to explore, you know, racism and sexism and these different things through the eyes of children, all thinking that they are sort of like the bad one. And also that realization of sort of how you feel is not necessarily true to what is portrayed to the outside world and what other people believe because not everyone has all the pieces of different things. I really enjoyed this book. I think that it explored really interesting themes and also just the way that it was done, like I said, with the three children, each telling their story sort of within different parts of this timeline was such a cool way to, to tell the story. Next up, we have The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. Emma Donahue is the woman that wrote Room, which is one of my favorite books. I haven't read that book in years, but I do remember it making a huge impact on me. This book follows three days in the life of a nurse who works in a uh, nursing, not a nursing ward, uh, pregnancy ward, I guess, like where women give birth. Why can't I think of the proper, where, where women give birth? She works in sort of like the hospital wing where women are giving birth um, in Ireland during the Spanish flu. So it has three days of her life and sort of all the tension and the lack of staff and all these unknowns that are happening because they don't know, you know, how to control the flu. They don't know all the different symptoms. This book is actually quite graphic. So you have women that are coming in to give birth and the way I think just like it's like historical fiction right and I think the way that um women had to give birth 100 years ago is terrifying it astounds me how much medicine has progressed in you know the last 100 100 something years but what I really loved about this book is that it's very intense sort of like what is happening in the book is very intense there's women giving birth there's you know people dying everywhere from the flu there's there's a lot of sort of the same things that happened during our pandemic now and in, in the last two years that have sort of like the same politics and stuff that have like weaved their way into her world at this time there's all of that going on while well. there's a hospital that's understaffed there's a lot of pressures and it's, it's just a very intense couple of days but the way that it is written is very delicate I was reading these things kind of mortified at times that this was happening but just the way that it was written was very very calm and very relaxed and it just it kind of flowed really really nicely i really enjoyed this book i think it was such a good glimpse into ireland during the spanish flu and what was going on there um, but written in such a delicate way it was just a little bit of a snapshot of this woman's life and the struggles that she was going through and the people in her life that she was connected to and it was amazing i love this book i also think the cover is astoundingly beautiful my one dud of this month was how to be happy by eleanor davis i wish i had this book with me it was like i said from the library it was a graphic novel um and it just felt really really flat for me uh it did say at the beginning you know this is not going to teach you how to be happy if you actually need to go talk to someone like go see a therapist kind of thing and i did not think that this was you know going to pull me out of sadness or anything like that but essentially it was a graphic novel that was full of little short stories and like little comic strips and i read this at the beginning of the month and i could probably not tell you a single one of these comic strips like not a single one of them left any sort of lasting impression on me even once i finished reading this book I already kind of had forgotten everything. It just, the the pictures themselves, a lot of them were very, very different. Like the art styles were very different. And I, I loved the imagery in the actual uh, book, but the actual, the content behind it, you know, the words and, and what was happening with these different characters fell completely flat. So I think the, the art was really, really beautiful, but the words and the literature in it really, really fell flat for me. And because of that, I did not love this book, unfortunately. I really wanted to because it just, it was so beautiful and the images were so striking, but the words just, they, I, I, I literally just don't remember any of them. None of it, none of it made any impact on me. Then we have Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This is a book that people say you should go into kind of blind and I'm gonna agree with that. Um, it is definitely a fantasy book, which I was a bit nervous about because as you guys know, I don't read a lot of fantasy, but this month I read fantasy 
and sci-fi actually. So, and I like both of the books, so that's cool. Um, Piranesi is the main character of this book. At first I was quite confused as to what was going on, which makes sense because it's fantasy and it's not a genre that I read very much. Um, but then you realize that Piranesi also has some puzzle pieces that they need to put together and sort of figure out what is actually going on in their life because some things that they thought were their reality are potentially not their reality. I would recommend this book 100% as someone who does not read a lot of fantasy. This was a book that I found really engaging and I, I really liked the main character. I think Piranesi was just was very kind-hearted and watching them, you know, figure out what was going on and trying to be helpful, but then being confused and not really knowing like who to trust and all of this. I just, I really loved watching them go through their life in this world. If you have read this book, please let me know down below if you enjoyed it because I just, I think it was so cool. And the last book that I read from the library was Melissa by Alex Gino. This is a book that is constantly being banned and luckily enough, it was not banned in my library. It was like part of the LGBT um, sort of panel area they have like one section of the library every month where like whatever the month is they put out a bunch of books for that month um and i saw this book and i decided to pick it up because bookish realm constantly talks about this book because it's always being banned i think this book is meant more for middle grade students so it didn't impact me as much as it would i think if i was you know 11 or 12 years old um that's not to say it was a bad book i just think for me it didn't make much of an impact but it is about a trans girl who is in elementary school and she is trying to come to terms with her own feelings and her own identity and and how she wants to present to the world and then also how to tell her her family and her friends um what she is feeling you are watching her thought process as she is solidifying who she is as a person and who she identifies as and then her sort of like struggle when other people are misgendering her and misidentifying her and her trying to figure out how to tell them that. For the demographic that it was meant for, I think it would be really, really good. Now let's talk about my two audiobooks that I listened to. The first one is Black Girls Must Die Exhausted by Jane Allen. This is a sequel to Black Girls Must Be Magic, I want to say, and there is a third book that is coming out or has come out. I'm not quite sure, but um, yeah, it is going to be a triple, triple, what is it called? Triple series? A tr tr trilogy trilogy oh my goodness um it's going to be a trilogy but this is the second one in the series it follows once again our main character tabitha and i don't want to talk too much about this book because if you haven't read the first one then there's like plot points and stuff that will be spoiled in the second one but i really like tabitha i in the first book as i said in my review back whenever i did it was uh she did something in that book that made me really not like her and it was hard for me to sort of like get back onto her team by the end of that book i was definitely crying i was super invested in everything again and i really liked her character and i felt a little bit protective of her if you will um and in this book i continue to really like her it follows once again her friend group it follows um her struggles and different decisions that she has to make regarding her fertility it follows the men in her life um who i still don't love the men in her life i'm not a huge fan of the man that's like her partner not partner type of person um, but that's it's, it's all right uh you still watch him grow as a person and you watch them grow together and apart and together and apart and all these things um but i liked it i really like this book i think the way that it's written is very engaging and all the hurdles that she has to kind of overcome and i like her i just like her i also think the covers of these books are so stunning i i don't have any of the physical copies but i kind of want them just to have on my bookshelf but and lastly, we have a book that was one of my anticipated reads for this year, and that is Hi Hi How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. This is a book that I wanted to read based solely on the cover. This video has a lot of books that I really like the covers of, um, but this is definitely one where I just saw the cover and I thought it was stunning, and then I heard it was sci-fi and I got a little bit worried, um, but then I decided to read it anyways. I did read this as a buddy read with Biblio Ghouls, whose channel I will link down below if she makes videos. Again, um, maybe she will talk about this and give her uh, opinions as well. This was a series of short stories that were set in sort of like a pandemic ravaged, climate ravaged world. That all these different short stories that were um, linked together, maybe because like the people in them were linked together or maybe just because they were all living in this world together. I really loved this book at first. I think the first couple stories were really, really engaging. You were watching how the world was dealing with a pandemic and they were dealing with it in a very, very different way than we have in the last couple of years. And so you're watching that and I, I got really invested into those stories and I kind of wanted there to be more of that. I almost wish that they had chosen maybe one or two of those short stories and expanded them into like a full length novel. And then the middle section started to get a little bit more abstract, a little bit kind of like less believable, maybe a little bit more sci-fi, if you will. Um, and it started to lose me a bit because the people started to not be as connected and there was just more themes happening. But then by the end, it got 
very abstract actually there was like things that have definitely not happened on this planet before but somehow it became a little bit more emotional and introspective and i started to really like the characters that were in the last couple stories and i think that it brought everything together sort of seeing where it started and where it could potentially end and i really liked that this is another book that i would recommend even as someone who does not generally read sci-fi those are all the books that i read this month please let me know down below what your favorite book of june was i need some good recommendations because i think in july i'm gonna have more time to read again um so i'm gonna be diving back into my tbr and all the things that i want to be reading as always thank you guys so much for watching i hope you're all having a wonderful day and i will see you in the next video